Welcome to How to Rock the Stage Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Bontrager interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome to a midday live edition of How the Rock to Stage show. I'm The Trigger, Rich Bontrager, and it's such a crazy busy day that middle of the day, you push the wrong show intro, and we're doing 2 p.m. with The Trigger, but no, it really is a nooner. And we're having a nooner today with a great show. We're going to talk about how to elevate getting guests, how to find better guests, but how to get them into your funnel and succeed. And I know everyone is trying to do that across the board. It's one of the most important areas of networking, connecting. But you don't want to just connect. You want to keep moving up higher and higher and higher. We're going to get into that conversation of how do you open those doors? How do you make that happen? But uh, before we get into all that, we do want to let you know how the Rock Stage normally airs. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we go live, and we're streaming on multiple channels. Normally, we talk about helping, helping you shine on camera and shine on stage to elevate your brand authority. That's part of what we're going to talk about here today. But it's all made possible by Adavita Studios. They are powering How the Rock Stage Show. Adavita Studios is going to take this episode, turn it into an audio podcast, and they have an experienced team paired with their state-of-the-art technology for remote broadcasting. Brings your message to life faster to the market. They work with you to produce the, the audio books, the podcast series, and they help you distribute it to the wisely, wide marketplace. And for more information to learn about Autovita, go to autovita.com. That's autovita.com. So yes, we're going to get into growing you and your brand, getting to that dream client. How do you open those doors? How do you get to the right doors? What do you find the doors? Josh Tapp is a uh, first entrepreneurial experience endeavor was creating a market agency everything was going great until his largest client fired him i, I wanted to get this in here today they fired him because he over delivered he had helped his clients produce enough qualified leads by february to provide revenue to sustain them for the rest of the year that's when he realized that the prospects he was attracting were more focused on pinching pennies than getting results Josh Sapp, CEO, founder of Pantheon, and here he comes in right now. Pantheon FM, Josh Tapp, great to have you. Hey, guys, good to be here. I'm excited. So as we kick this off, you literally had a client fire you because you overachieved. I want to be able to make sure they understand that's our dream, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. So this is our marketing agency was was specifically doing facebook ads for local businesses so um, this is actually a real estate brokerage in my hometown and you know what that bio doesn't tell you is we had under delivered for probably five clients in the past month before that and lost those clients too right <laughs> so so I, I don't want people to think that oh yeah josh's agency was like crushing it we were not doing very well with that agency and that was kind of the point right um but what was interesting is we were generating leads for people and and what we did is we ran this campaign. We finally nailed it. We're like, okay, we figured it out. And in two months time, we ended up driving them enough leads to supplement for the entire year. And so they're like, that's all we need. Um, and then they fired us. And, and I want, I don't want to say fired cause it was, it was more of a, a temporary, Hey, let's pause until next year. But that meant, Hey, pausing payment till next year. And I'm going, well, shoot. Cause I was on a fixed retainer model, right? It was not, not a good model. Cause I was like, you literally paid me like $3,000 and I, I should have been making, you know, that for every month for the rest of the year. So it was, it was actually a, it was a sad day, but that was, that was actually a really dark time in my business. Cause my wife had to go back to work to pay the wow. bills. For it was crazy. But since that time, over 1500 clients producing over 25 million in revenue from your podcast, you found a way to open doors. And we talked about this on rock the stage that do business on your podcast, have guests on your podcast that you want to do business with. You put that on steroids, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, and and <laughs> I mean, we can dive into this, but there, there's a lot that goes into that methodology because the podcast is just the door opener, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't even have to be a podcast. So we can get into that as well, but um, absolutely. So what is a dream guest? How do you help people even decide? Because part of the problem is we talk about niching down. We talk about knowing your target audience. And some people that I've worked with, they, 
they think they're narrowed down, but they really don't know their target. So do you help people figure that out so they do know who their dream client is? Yes, absolutely. And, and actually, I think this is a better place to start than like who the guest is because the number one problem I, I have, you know, I've been in marketing for over 10 years. Um, I've been in business since I was 11 years old. I'm 29 now. Um, and I've been doing marketing ever since then, but actively marketing for 10 years. And what I can tell you is that the, the thing that annoys me most is people are like, you've got to niche down, niche down, niche down till it hurts. Everybody says that. And some of my favorite people say that. And they're not wrong, but the problem is people do that too soon in the process. They just start saying, well, I'm going to serve real estate agents, but they have to be a man and they have to weigh 220 pounds and they have to blah, 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 blah. And you're like, dude, way too far, way, way too far. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's just my opinion. So where, where I actually recommend people start is quite a contrary in opinion, which is start with how much money do you want to make? What do you actually want to generate in revenue? So I have a, I have a flywheel that I like to, to share with people and I don't have it up here. I, I could probably draw it, but then it'll be really awkward because my handwriting sucks, but <laughs> I want you guys to envision this with me. So it's, it's three circles. So, um, and you make kind of a recycling symbol. So you do one circle at the top, one on the bottom, right, one on the bottom left, and you interconnect those with arrows. Okay. Yep. So this is just the marketing flywheel. It can be used for anything. And I, I ask people to start here first because the first pillar of this, the top circle of that triangle is actually generating revenue. And this is where most people make a mistake. They come in, they're like, Oh, I'm going to start a show. I'm going to you know, figure out who my ideal client is and do all this other stuff and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That's the problem, right? <laughs> Rich, you're like, how many times have I done this for myself? I, this is, I have to ask myself this same <laughs> thing all the time. I'm like, God, oh, this would have saved me four years if somebody had just explained this to me. But yeah. um, the other problem people have is they always start by selling something cheap. Like, okay, I'm gonna sell this hundred dollar product. I'm gonna sell this twenty seven dollar thing. I'm gonna sell this, you know, I, I'm maybe a thousand dollars. I could probably sell for a thousand dollars. I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't care how fat, ugly, young, old, whatever you are. Um, you can sell something for $10,000, okay? And in fact, I'm going to encourage all of you to sell something for $25,000. Here's the reason why. Um, when we increase the price perception of a product, we increase the quality of the client. Oh, wait, say that again. Say that so, again. So when we, when we increase price perception of a product or service, we increase the quality of the client, Okay. I, I want you to think about this. If you're like, man, all of my clients are like, Oh, I don't know if I can afford this or they're there. You feel like you're only selling to broke people. That's your problem. You're starting in the wrong place. Okay. So what I always tell people is like, you got to start with, I want to sell something for $10,000. Then you can ask yourself who buys $10,000 products, right? It's not college students. I'll tell you that much. The only thing they nope. pay for that's over a hundred dollars is college, right? <laughs> Um, or mommy, daddy pay for the other things. So we've, we've found that you have to first anchor that in your brain. Like, Hey, I'm willing to make revenue first. Does that make sense, Rich? It does make sense, but you completely shattered every other paradigm that everyone's talking about <laughs> there. But it also puts you in a whole frame of mind of this is business because as you said, people are trying to stair step up and grow it up. You're saying this is dive up the deep end. And let's yep. say we're putting the target here, go for the target you really want. Stop wasting your time. Right, right. And, and I, I know it sounds like I'm avoiding your question, by the way, Rich, of like, I'm not coming to like, who should I bring on my show? But that I will get there, I promise. <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure that we, we establish this first, because if I say, oh yeah, you should bring on Joe Rogan onto your podcast, you're going to go, what? Why? Well, right? that's why I brought you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, but this is, this is the point though, right? Is like, you have to start thinking in terms of money and everybody think there's like this stupid stigma. I hate it of, well, you know, I'm not in it for the money. Baloney, baloney. You can be in it for a mission and you can be in it for money because if you're not in, in it for money, it, if you want to just see why, like I got to be careful here cause I'm going to offend a lot of people saying this, <laughs> but if, if you, if you're like, Oh, I'm not in it for the money, go start a nonprofit. Okay. But then go look at nonprofits and realize how many of those fail and you'll realize this is why you need to be in it for money. Okay. So, it's, uh, okay. But, but, but a, a lot of people feel like slimy, like used car salesman. I'm in it for the money. It sounds greedy, but the paradigm shift you're describing is you, you have a goal in your head and your mind, but you don't dare say it out loud. You're actually allowing them to say it out loud. 
Yes, please, please say it. Like, I'm going to be the guy. I don't care if I become the most hated person on the planet for saying this. You're in it for the money, and it's okay. Become okay with that because if you're not, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you this right now, and this will actually make more sense by illustrating this. Coming back to that diagram of those three circles, right? Yeah. We start with making money first. Okay. We take half of that money, money, we go to Italy with our spouse, whatever we want to do, pay your bills, whatever you got to do, right? The other 50% goes right into um, reinvesting. Okay. We reinvest that money. And I'm not talking stocks, bonds, real estate, other things like this. You can eventually get there, but you take that 50% of your money and you invest in the third circle, which is growth strategies. Okay. If you have a mission, you have a message, you are legacy focused, which is all of my clients. They have something that is driving them. They're not just selling some widget. They're like, Hey, I have a message. I got to get out there. All of my clients fall in this pool and they're like, I want people to hear this message or to be rallied to me. You cannot do that for free. Okay. Our world is an economy. We have an economy. It's run by dollars. It's not run by favors the way everybody thinks it is. And so, I, I know I'm like trying, I'm not trying to be super contrarian here, but like the truth is that if I don't beat this into your head of like, start thinking money first, it allows you to decide who you want to talk to. Well, again, you're, you're jumping off that chasm. You're jumping over that place of I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying to get to the level I want to get to. I want to get to that level. You're literally saying, forget about it. Just go to that level, plant your flag there. And you will, it also doesn't help attract the higher level people right away because they will see who you are, what you're talking about. If they see you're kind of middle of the road or at the beginning, high level people don't want to work with you. So you're literally putting the flag out there early to say, here I am for you. Right, exactly. And, and I'm, I'm putting this really in the frame of like the, the person who wants to sell to entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. If you're trying to sell like widgets, so you're selling you know, e-commerce or direct to consumer, there are other strategies for this. So I'm not going to pretend that this strategy works for everyone but it does work for the person who's like, I want to work with entrepreneurs, which is most people listen to podcasts. That's who they are. So, <laughs> yeah, um, that's definitely you and I. <laughs> oh, 100%. And, and it's a new category because everybody's like, oh, B2B. I don't think it's B2B. I think it's E2E. I think it's entrepreneur to entrepreneur because it's creator to creator, right? Well, let me put a twist on that. That's what you think because I've, I fall more on that visionary creator side as an entrepreneur. Yeah. But I think visionaries want to be with visionaries. There's something about being yeah. in that room of that energy where it's so buzzing. People yeah, like, it's magnetic. It's, it's, it's powerful. Those are the people you want to get to, right? Right. Yeah. And when and most of us are, are introverts, so we like the one-on-one -on -one conversations, <laughs> um, but we're so visionary. Like, I mean, you, you and I, Rich, right? We, we could sit down around a campfire and talk for you know, all through the night, right? Yeah. About yes. business opportunities and ideas and saving the world. And, you know, by 4 a.m., we're literally talking how to solve world hunger, right? Yeah. And and this is the point, though, right? Is like, as, as an entrepreneur, if you want to start working with entrepreneurs, stop trying to go for the brand new person. Everybody goes for that. Like, okay, I'm going to create a course for the brand new entrepreneur. I'm going to tell you right now, the only people who should be creating content for brand new entrepreneurs are people who are 10 million plus in sales because they can show the path clearly with guaranteed results, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. So you've established the financial level you want to go to. Now you're trying to talk about the entrepreneur to entrepreneur. The, the question most people are going to say, okay, how do I attract them? What's, what's the fly, the ointment? What's the open door now to get to those people? So this, this is a really good question. And what I'm going to answer this is you've already done 90% of the work by raising your price. Okay. A $10,000 plus product will attract somebody who's doing 500,000 plus in sales. Okay. Because most people who aren't at at least 500,000 in sales, they're, they're probably like, I can't really afford a lot of this stuff yet. You know? And a lot of times I want you to be completely honest with yourselves as you're listening to this is that, are you really the person who should be, is that really the last $10,000 they should spend? is hiring you, right? And, and when we're really honest with ourselves, probably not, right? Um, it, it, again, I, I hope I'm really not pissing no, people no, off. No, 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 no. I think this is great because we, we all play down. And I think part of this, there's also a mental and emotional side of the way we play down. Part of it is we know who we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we all go, it's just me. But the fact is, you are a genius. You are an expert. You do have something to give back. You do have that sweet spot. 
what's wrong with elevating that and owning that and then putting a price tag on it? I, again, I know too many people that keep coming back to, <laughs> it's just me. Yeah. So that, well, that's possible part of the mindset. You have to own your genius to put that $10,000 price tag out there. Right. And, and truthfully, so I'm, I'm just going to put this out there is that 10,000 really should be your base point. So a lot of people come to me, Oh, Josh, what about like 4,000, 5,000? I'm like, great. You want to work with broke people? Go for it. And if you want to work with people who have money, and I'm just going to tell you this right off the bat, because so I've, I've interviewed over 2000 entrepreneurs and they've all made over a million dollars. The only thing I ask those people, what do you need? How can I get you in the door with that person? Right? That's all I look for. What do you need? Where, where are you at? And all businesses need three things. They need marketing, they need sales, they need fulfillment. That's all they need, right? And they're always having problems in one of those three areas. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we jump into opening up that door of that connection, let's just go back. There's a big debate right now, at least I'm hearing it, on the websites, on your social media. Post your price, don't post your price. Yeah. Which one... Would you recommend when you're saying you're going to jump off and go to 10,000, 15, 20,000, do you post them or do you not post them? I'm going to answer your question with a question, which is how many sales have you made through your website in the last year? <laughs> okay. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> um, <laughs> the reason I say this is nobody's looking at it 99% of the time. Right. Yeah. So people are like, well, should I post it? Should I post it? You're like, when was the last time you had somebody go to your website? That's the big first question, right? Yeah. The, the, the second thing is, um, it, you have to you have to base that on your product, right? Like split test it. I'm not going to tell you what works on a website because I'm not a website guy, but I can tell you that, and this is a great question, is should I post it, should I not post it? Yeah. For me, I don't care. I'm like, it's a great vetting tool. If I put, so like we have a mastermind, it's $25,000 and I tell the world about it. 25 grand to be in my mastermind per year, okay? And that's pretty much the entry point for the, for working with me, we do have a very low ticket service. That's a, we finally launched after doing millions of dollars in sales because I do have the clear path right. for the, the new entrepreneur, right? But it's $97 a month. Right. So th this is the point though. There's a huge price discrepancy there. And a lot of people will look at me and go, well, why, why are you talking about it? And again, the, the website guys are going to say, don't do it. Don't do it. Right, let me, let me rephrase that. The funnel guys are going to say, don't do it. The website guys are going to say, do it right. And on your page, you should have three different pricing tiers and each one. Like, yeah, there's like a whole psychology around it. Does that make so, sense? So we set the price. You and I've had a discussion. You've asked a question about what I can do for you. Now we open up the door. What happens next? Well, so I, I've actually, I think I've jumped a little too far forward because I, I want to answer your question first. If this is okay. Cause okay. again, if I don't go through this step, the next step's not going to make sense. So what gotcha. I'll tell you is anchoring your price is going to be the first most important thing. The second thing you want to do is you want to say, who do I actually want to work with? If, if you want to work with A-listers, actors, athletes, whatever, whoever, they are not out of your reach. I'm going to illustrate this with a story. Okay. Coming back clear to my, the beginning of my story, we talked about the podcast or the, the marketing agency, right? And we were having this problem. Well, you just zoomed in my face. That threw me off for a second. <laughs> um, but uh, I, guys, I'm, I'm very ADD. So I apologize if I, if I get distracted. <laughs> Those of you who are like engineers won't even watch me because I'm, I'm annoying that way to you. Um, but, but I had this, this Facebook ads agency. People started firing me. And I had to ask myself that question of who's the right, who's the right client, right? And I had a mentor who came and helped me a ton with this. He's like, Josh. So at the time, um, I was like, you know what? I want to start working with successful people, like really successful people. Yeah. So I launched a podcast and with no intention of growing an audience. This has never been my intention. Funny enough, after doing it long enough and you start to get a good audience, we get a few hundred thousand people listening to our show now, which is like, it's, it's pretty fun, but I still don't really monetize that side of it. But I can tell you is that that has gotten me in the door with every single person I could possibly want. And here's, here's what's interesting. So I decided to launch the show and I said, okay, I'm going to shoot for the stars. I know one guy, I once watched him speak and then he, he connected with me on LinkedIn. It was like the coolest thing ever for me at the time. Um, and I think I was like 23 at the time. Um, so I really had nothing going for me. I was not successful. 23, white kid from Idaho, very small town. Like there's no reason to, to work with me, right? Um, I was broke as a joke. So, um, but I, I reached out to this guy and I said, Hey, I'm, I'm launching this new show. I'd love to have you come on as one of my first guests. I never thought the guy would respond. I reached out to my LinkedIn, by the way, 
it's a hack for all of you. LinkedIn is the best place to connect with people yes, for a is. show. Highly endorsed. Um, if you're watching this on my LinkedIn, this is the only place I'm going live that, that cues you into anything. So anyways, long story short is that he responded immediately. I sent it out and he goes, sure, I'd love to come here show when. I was like, I mean, is tomorrow too soon? And he's like, sure, let's do it. Hop on a call. Find out this guy's making like $30 million a year. Okay. I was like, I just cracked the code. I couldn't get a freaking real estate agent to sit down with me before, right? And I'm sorry if you're a real estate agent. That's not me being like, oh, you suck in life. It's just that you're usually pretty accessible. Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't even get them to sit down with me. And I was like, man, this guy's name is Josh Steinley, by the way. You should all check him out. Really awesome guy. Comes on. Um, and I was like, what do you want? What do you need? Right? I'm like, I have a Facebook ads agency. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to close the doors because I hate doing this. Ended up doing that, by the way. Just closed the doors and moved on to the next thing. Um, but I was like, I want to launch the show because I really want to figure out what you want. Like, what, what do successful people want? And he, he broke it down for me. He's like, Josh, it's two things. There's only two things that the wealthy want. They want time and they want relationships. That's it. If you can solve a time issue, they're great, right? So anything money related, by the way, is time related. And relationships, they understand the value of those. Yeah. That's all they want. And this is what's been crazy is I have asked the same question 2,000 times. I get almost the exact same answer every time. Time and relationships, time and relationships, time and relationships. That is an interesting concept, okay? So, so to answer your question, coming full circle, like how do you actually talk to these people, right? I, I went on a journey with this and with, with Josh Steinle, I asked him like, who else, who else should I be interviewing? He referred me, um, I think it was like 45 people. And I reached out to another 40 some odd people. Okay, but this was crazy. He referred me billionaires with a B, okay? I was going, this is absurd, I'm, I'm 23. I was like, try, <laughs> I had like a blue Yeti mic. If those of you who are using a blue Yeti, Rich will laugh at this, right? Don't use a Yeti upgrade. If you're willing to put a little bit of money into this. Um, I was using a Yeti mic. I was like stuffed in a closet. I had clothes on the side to muffle my sound. It was bad. It was really, really bad. But that allowed me to get in the door with these people worth billions of dollars. And all I started asking was, or you had a question. Let, let me. No, I was, gonna, I was just going to highlight the fact one door high level, you ask the right question. And most people, if you ask the question, who can you recommend me to? Who should I talk to? Most people are dying to give the answer I found. The fact is yep. we're freaked out. We're uncomfortable. We're nervous about talking to the high level person. We're in all of the high level person. And all they want to do is help you. Yes. That's the advice I can give you at this moment as Josh is sharing is, just go for the ass. They're wet. They literally want to hand you the keys of the kingdom, don't they? Yep. And and the younger you are, the uglier you are, the fatter you are, whatever it is, <laughs> that is your advantage. It's your advantage. You know, I was so scared because I was I was 23 and I'm working with this guy right now. He has he's done he's had five careers, okay? Um, pro baseball player, huge stock market guy. He's written books, he's had TV shows, everything. And he's, he's 84, 84 years old. And he's like, Josh, like he's having imposter syndrome guys. Like I'm too old. People aren't going to listen to me. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? You've done like five incredible careers. And he's still like, I'm kind of scared to launch a show. I'm kind of scared to like ask people for what I want. And, and Rich, I want to highlight what you say, you said there, because the best four letter word in the, in the English vocabulary is help. Okay. Like, you don't have to come at it as a whiny victim. No, it's coming at it from a position of power going, stating your intentions and asking for help accomplishing the goal. Visionaries love that. I, I can't tell you, you ask, you ask me and any entrepreneur, all entrepreneurs are visionaries. You ask me, Josh, I want you to be part of my business. I'm like, Oh, I really want to. I can't. How can I help you though? And I'll help get you in the door with somebody else who can do it. Exactly. Right. It's so like, I just want to solidify your point, Rich. Cause that, no, like, no. Like you said, it's it, that's the best the best thing to ask people, right? So you've gone for the ask. He opens up his Rolodex. He gives you the Rolodex. What's next? So so when you bring someone on your show, okay, you you've opened the door. Josh Steinle, that thirty million dollar guy, was a dream client for me. I wanted to work with him. Okay, this is what's really funny. I did not actually ask Josh to be my client ever. Still haven't asked him to be my client. He is still to this day. This is like six, seven years later, he still sends me people all the time. Hey, you need to be on Josh's show. You need to be on Josh's show. You need to be on Josh's show. And these are like billionaires with a B. Yeah. I never have to worry about it, right? And people are like, oh, you just got lucky with him. 
I promise you interview one successful person and ask them who they know, but ask with the intention of, Hey, I'm trying to figure out what service I should offer in this space. Yes. Okay. I'm wanting to charge at least $10,000 for this service, but I want to do my research before I do it. Start asking people that way and watch what happens. It's really interesting. So what I, what I tell people, when people go through my program, I tell them it's a 30 by 30 challenge. Okay. You have 30 days to interview 30 people. I don't care if it's a podcast. I don't care if it's for a blog, a social media post, whatever you're comfortable with. It does not matter. You ask for an interview. That's the way you get in the door. <clears throat> people love PR opportunities, right? Yes. So don't book more than an hour. Okay. Ever, 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 ever successful people. I mean, you're lucky to get an hour from them most of the time. Yeah. Um, but what you do is you, you bring them onto the show and all you're going to do is you're going to interview them, highlight their story and poke their status button, make them feel like they're the coolest person on the planet. Right. Like Rich is doing to me right now. <laughs> well, that's my secret sauce. Okay. I tell people, I'm going to give you great questions. Yep. We're going to get meaty too, but I'm going to give you home run after home run. I want you to shine so brightly here that when you get done, you go, wow, that right. was great. And I walk away going successful day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's so, so, so powerful. Um, again, it sounds like it's, it's an ego driven thing from like, a, Oh, prideful thing. But again, it's another paradigm. I hope to shift for people. It's okay to help people feel cool. Okay. Yeah. Even if they have an inflated ego, most people who have the inflated ego really have a hard life behind the scenes most of the time. And so if you, if you actually inflate their ego, it might, you might be like, Oh, I'm doing this for the wrong person. I shouldn't inflate their ego. Just inflate it. They'll love you. Okay. It, some people might call it butt kissing, but it's actually worth it. Um, you, you'll see it. You'll see a lot of value in doing that. But when you're bringing them on the show, I have a method. And this is actually a really simple method I recommend to all of you is, is a 60 minute interview. You break into three segments. So you do, or and not even interviews, a 60 minute call with this person. Okay. Hop onto zoom. You can do it via audio, do whatever you got to do. I would recommend face-to-face -face interaction. I love that more. Yep. Um, but in 60 minutes, you literally, so it's broken into 10, 20, and 30. It's the 10, 20, 30 method, okay? 10 minutes, you get to know the person, make a friend, okay? The second thing that you do is you actually do the interview. That's where you poke the status button for 20 minutes, okay? Ask really good questions. Get really succinct with what you're doing. You could be like Rich. He's really good at this. He can do it in like 30 to 40 minutes, right? <laughs> it's a really, really good interview. If you're scared of that, start with a five-minute interview. It does not have to be long. But I found the sweet spot's about 20 minutes. And then you have 30 minutes left over to ask them what they want. Ask them how you can help. And I'm going to give you a question. I would I'd recommend all of you ask this after every interview. What's the next project you're super excited about and how can I help? What's That's the it. next project you're excited about and how can I help? Because sometimes it's, I'm writing a book. Sometimes it's, I'm launching a product. Oh, I'm trying to launch something on social media. They will lay their problems out for you. Okay. And then your job, especially as you're interviewing 30 people, is to connect them with one another. So say, you know what? I don't have a service for that, but I know the best in the best for this space. And you just connect them to them, okay? You will become that person's best friend, both people. Because the person who receives the referral is like, you're the greatest human on the planet for sending me free money. And they'll probably pay you for it, by the way. But the other person is like, you just provided a solution to a problem and I didn't even have to pay you or ask you for anything, right? Right. I was coming in here expecting a PR opportunity and I got a solution to one of my biggest problems, right? Does but that make sense? let me stress, if you're doing this as a podcast show, because I know the podcast technique that you're describing, it works well. You do not go for the ask or go for the share on the show. It's after the show. After I the show is for everybody. Yes. That is a very show. good, clear point. <laughs> Don't do it on the show. Don't be that guy or gal. It's, it's just, I've seen it done. Right. And it's like, yeah, you just, close that door really fast. It's never going to happen now because you make it awkward. You're yes. like that guy at the party who walks up to people and makes that really dirty joke. And people are like, eh, and then everybody like slowly works their way away from you. Right? right. Don't be, don't be icky. Okay. You can be ugly and still be the coolest person in the room. Yes. Okay. I know I keep saying that it's okay. It's okay. So, so you, do all this research, <laughs> you get all these questions. You ask the question, how do you close a deal to generate the money? So this is, this is what's cool. You don't close the deal there. Okay. That interview is meant to establish a relationship. This is where a lot of, a lot of my quote unquote competitors in this space 
are doing it completely wrong. They come in and they pitch, pitch, pitch. That 30 minutes is like, I've got to close a deal in 30 minutes. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're going for one. We're going for one to many. That's the whole reason we we do this strategy is how can I build a relationship with this person so that they open up their network with me, right? That's what we want, okay? Then you're going to ask for two things. Number one is you're going to ask um, for guests for your show, right? You're going to say, hey, who else do you know? I'd love to interview more people like you, you know, uh, somebody who's a multimillionaire who's done X, Y, Z has a really cool story. I'd love to interview somebody like that. Do you know somebody like that that you could refer my way? And then the second question you ask him is, can I remain in contact with you? Because I love to get guests from my guests. Is that okay? That's all you have to ask. Okay. Then post interview, this is where the sale happens. Okay. I will tell you out of every five interviews I have, when I ask people what they're doing, that they're excited about, yeah. they reciprocate to me. And instead of going off and going, oh, I can take this and make this a sales opportunity. I say, oh, you know, I, I give them a one sentence. This is what I do. Oh, I help people get in the door with their dream clients. And they're like, oh, okay, well, fill me in. What does that mean? And then I'll give them a, a one to two sentence spiel. And if they start taking, a lot of times they're like, well, I really need that. And they'll buy from me. One out of five people I interview, okay? Right. But they are like pulling it out of me. Like, please let me buy from you versus, hey, you should buy my crap. You should buy my crap. You should buy my crap, right? Um, but then this is what's really interesting. Get their phone number. I, I have phone numbers of multiple multi-billionaires who I can text any time of the day and say, hey, I'm looking for somebody else for my show. Hey, I'm, we're, we're trying to put together this deal. You want to come be a part of it? They move on that, right? They'll give you their number. And you say, hey, I'm not here to spam you. I just want to send guests your way. Maybe send you a couple PR opportunities here or there. I'll be honest with you. I very rarely have to like cultivate these relationships. They just happen. So okay. let me jump in and highlight this again. I have numbers on this phone right here. Love it. Of people that have no business, give me their telephone number. <laughs> yeah. Those are golden eggs. They are people you respect, honor, and you guard that list. Yes. 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 You swap between leader to the leader, but you do not swap that name to a public to your friend this is your golden goose list and yeah. i just want to clarify again respect that private number yep don't text asking questions don't text giving them birthday room like no i hate that when people text me like, happy birthday i'm like i know this is an automation okay i don't care um but and that might just be me some of you that might be like oh, i love getting birthday text great um but Rich, that's a really, really good point. And, and I want people to understand this is that, like Rich said, this becomes your inner circle. These are your people, right? And if you just learn to, to help them find time and help them make better relationships, there's great ways to structure offers around that, okay? I can deep dive in this. I actually have a whole training. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, by the way, it's like one of my top featured posts. Go watch that. Um, and it's not even a sales pitch. It's literally just a, a value add. Um, it's got, it's like 10 minutes of me showing you how like which offers fit into the time and relationships piece. Um, but cause I don't, I don't want to deep dive into that cause it's like a whole 10 minute conversation <laughs> and I know I'm already over time here. So, um, but, but the, the, the way that you turn that into an actual deal is you don't just have to ask for podcast guests. Okay. Get very, very, very intentional about your ask. Okay. We, we don't spam this list Ever. There should never be a, 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 what would you call that? Like a, like a group text, like a mass text out to right. everybody on this yeah. list. These are your people, right? And what you're going to do is after you do the interview, instead of sending them just like a thank you, you say, Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that, that uh, referral. Maybe they probably referred somebody to your show, then state your intentions. Okay. You can literally do this right after the interview if you want, right? Say your intentions. So let, let me give you an example. I have a mastermind, right? Um, we call it the Alliance. And what we do is we basically bring together 12 companies that all serve the same client. And by companies, I mean entrepreneurs, 12 entrepreneurs who serve the same client in a different way. But I look for very, very specific people. So what I'll do is I'll text them. Um, so let's say like Rich, right? Do I need to call you Trigger, by the way? Oh, everyone does, please. Okay, I'll call you Trigger. So um, I'm really <laughs> bad with nicknames unless I create them myself. So um, <laughs> um, I'll give you, I'll give you another one. Um, but, uh, but you know, you have a book, don't you, Rich? It's in the works. 
is in the works. Okay. 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 So, um, are you self-publishing or do you have a publisher? Self-publishing. Okay. Awesome. So, um, do you have a coach for that? Uh, of sorts. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Rich, um, you have a book coming out. Let's, let's just say you've launched your book, right? Yeah. Um, and I would say, congratulations on the book launch. Um, this is so awesome. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, who was your publisher? And if it wasn't published, who was your coach? Because that was a cool book, right? Mm -hmm. Can I poke the status button, right? And I'll say, hey, you know, I'm looking for a publisher to be a part of my mastermind um, or, or, a, or a book coach who's amazing. And they obviously are amazing because they helped you. That's, that's somebody I'd love to have in, in my mastermind. Now, let me put this in terms of, uh, of um, let's say you're an agency, right? let's say you're selling Facebook ads, you have Facebook ad service and you love working right. with, with, um, PR for, let's just PR firms, right? We can use the book as an example, right? Um, of like, Hey, who's your PR firm for this? I've been seeing you everywhere. Right. And they're like, Oh, it was this person, blah, blah, blah. Hey, can you connect me to them? I actually work directly with PR firms to help them reach more amazing people like you. That's it. Right. I'm not spamming them saying, Hey, I serve entrepreneurs. I'm like, who did this for you? Can I meet them? And then they're, they're going to introduce you to like the head honcho of the company, the most amazing person. It's literally, it's game changing. Now I am, I am not a sales coach. Actually, I have a book sitting right here. I wish I had the cover on. It's called lift your impact. Can you guys see that? I don't think you can Fairly. see it. Fairly. Lift your impact. Okay. Richard Newman. I just met him the other day. I'm going to evangelize this book from the treetops. I have been reading this. <laughs> the coolest sales pitch I've ever seen. It's a five-step sales pitch. Go buy this book. You're welcome, Richard. He's not paying me for this, by the way. Um, but uh, really cool guy, really amazing public speaker, but really cool book. Anyways, but that's that's the point though. It's like you just need to get in the door and and everybody's trying to like figure out how to automate this and and like- You can't. It, it can't. It's, it's relationships. That's but, what I was going to end here with. I, I was going to yes. wrap it up as you've got the nice way of, again, targeting the money, the process, all the things that I want to really highlight this is about a relationship. So you cannot jump the hoop. You cannot automate this. You And again, the respect you need to give. And it's not like, oh, bow down and do that. It's just you need to give respect yeah. to the relationship. Because when okay. you build that trust, people talk about know, like, and trust. You have to know and really trust people before they open up the next door, the next door, the next door. And the Absolutely. only way they do that is by getting to know you and you taking the time to get to know them. There's no other way around this. You, you, you cannot automate this, Josh, can you? No. And, but, but here's, here's the point though, right? It's like everybody. And I, I do want to wrap this point and just to help everybody understand is that if you'll start to open your mind and stop saying, Oh, I'm, I'm a course creator. Oh, I'm, I'm a, this, that, or the other. Right. And you start saying I'm a deal maker. There is a deal in every relationship every single day. Okay. I, I've used, so that whole $25 million number, we're actually about to pass 50 and then I'll change that in my bio. $50 million in deals, okay? Yeah. And we've done this by matchmaking companies. There's always a deal and they will pay me six-figure, seven-figure retainers for these things, literally. There's a lot of money to be had in just identifying the needs of other people and being that connector. And then what will happen inevitably is your business will grow as the backbone, right. whatever you're selling because, because you're the hero in this case, right? You become the hero for them. And if you can be that for them and not just another person who's like, can I get coffee? Can you come on my show? Blah, 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 blah. Like none of those things ever matter to them. If you take the relationship to that next level and you genuinely care about that person, it's game over. Absolutely game over. And let me plant the flag on top of that. These high level people, the CEOs, these executives, these celebrities, whoever it is that you want to target, actually want you to succeed. I've Absolutely. talked to them, I've had the conversations. Uh, when you do the ask, like we talked about, when you do this, they are literally wanting you to succeed. You can blow this and destroy this, or you can do what Josh is describing <laughs> and build and build and build. It's amazing what happens when you walk through that door. Yeah. Josh, uh, we do have the lead people someplace. We have to lead them to your website here. Or this is your podcast, actually, because yeah. you do have an amazing podcast. You have grown Thank this you. from that one first amazing show. <laughs> what are they going to catch on your podcast? So my podcast, again, is my networking tool. Um, your, your audience is going to be the first one to know this. I'm actually going to launch another podcast that we will link on that same website as well. Um, but uh, we're going to make the show entirely about... 
um, this, this show is entirely about marketing, right? So we bring them on, I, I network with them. I share, we, we share marketing tactics and everything. So that's what you'll get from that show. This new show is actually going to be the behind the scenes with me. So, um, I'm literally just going to talk marketing. I'm going to talk sales. I'm going to be riffing into it. It's not going to be produced. Well, I'm literally just going to riff into the mic and publish it. So people, it's like a, basically a phone call with me. Do you remember teleconferencing back in the day? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even that long ago, but it feels like an eternity <laughs> ago. Um, it's going to feel like a teleconference, right? I'm just going to be hopping on there and, and sharing, sharing wisdom. So I, I hope that, um, you guys can come, uh, come and join us over there. And Rich, I do appreciate you having me on, man. This was a really fun one. You have great questions. Well, you kind of doing this for a while, but thank you very much. <laughs> again, this is- like I'm pretty much a pro. So. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everyone should know, Josh and I tried to get this on twice before, uh, last year, actually, early this year, and it just has not worked out. So this is one of those relationships that we've been trying to get here for you to hear his genius and let him express it. And it has been a great time, Josh, having you on here. Thank final you. comments to land the plane. What's your final mm, on this oh, great show? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a, a vision here, an analogy. Okay. One of my guests said this, one of my first guests, and it stuck with me forever. So um, Elaine Kelts is her name, by the way. She's like, everybody's waiting for, a door to be opened for them, or they're trying to open a door. And she said, screw that. What I do is I get into a hallway of doors and I start kicking down the doors. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> um, that analogy, I want you to think about what, what is your hallway of doors? How do you get into a, a hallway of doors, but not only doors, but people who are there to open the doors for you, the door openers. Um, I want you to be thinking about that as, as you, you leave this interview today of like, what's, what's that, what's that hallway? Well, how can I get in? Josh Tapp, great to have you with us. The founder of Pantheon FM. Again, you're going to want to check out, learn more about him. Thanks for being here with us today, Josh. And again, we did share out the podcast. Go check on that. Hit the QR code. Make sure you check it out there and uh, follow him on everything he's got going on. And, of course, we've got our podcast, How the Rock the State Show. This show will be converted into an audio version, and it will go up to all the different platforms out there. Check out the backlog of material, and we do have a lot of backlog of material we're trying to pick up. We're now celebrating four years of How the Rock the State Show, four years of doing this live streaming show, and we love doing this show. Stroke TV has been with us today, and Stroke TV has given a nice good shout-out to Jocelyn. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stroke TV, and everyone else that's been along with us today. Again, this has been a special edition of How the Rock to Stage Live. We'll be back next Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time for How the Rock to Stage, where we bring you amazing guests, rock star guests, to help you shine on camera, shine on stage, to elevate you and your brand authority. Come back next week, 7 o'clock Eastern time, and we will go live for How the Rock to Stage. Until then, on the trigger, Rich Bontrager, we'll see you. <laughs>